Today we're going to be giving you a review of the Tower Garden by Juice Plus. The Tower Garden was originally developed by Tim Blank, who worked with the Walt Disney World um, the land located at Epcot. And that's the place where you can do the tours of their hydroponic, aquaponic, and aeroponic systems. And Mr. Blank went out on his own and he developed a commercial system with a very large towers. And then he has these smaller towers, which are more for residential and individual use. He sold those for marketing um, to the Juice Plus Corporation, who now sells them through a multi-level uh, marketing um, distribution system. And the towers can come in one of two ways. There's your single tower, which comes with five of your um, pots here, and that'll hold 20 plants. That sells for $525, plus you need to add another $50 for tax and shipping. You can also do it on a monthly installment plan, which is $45.25 a month for 12 months. It also comes as what they call the family garden, which comes with three towers. A three tower system will add two baskets to each of your towers, uh, which is what they call the extension kit, which would be an add-on with your individual tower. That gives you 28 plants for tower, and with the three towers, that gives you a total of 84 you know, planting spots on it. That sells for $1,690, plus you need to add another $160 for shipping and handling. It sells then, if you do it in the monthly plan, for $142.33 per month. And again, that's for 12 months. Uh, the towers come with the timers, comes with your pumps. Um, if you get the family one, it comes with a tomato cage, which is a plastic cage that fits around. I wouldn't recommend buying that. It comes with the family tower, but if you have an individual tower, there's other things that you can do and buy and trellis with. It fits right on the unit, so to me, it, the plants, when you were trellising them on it, it kept them in the way, it shaded other plants. We had it up on the one system, and we won't be putting it back up on, on that system uh, this season, growing season, because again, like I said, it, it seemed to always be getting in our way rather than helping. If you do have vining plants, one of the things I would suggest is that, again, you tre trellis it away from your plants, um, from, your, from your towers, and not have it right there so you don't obstruct or uh, choke out or shade any of your plants. Overall, the um, tower we found was a very good system. Uh, we liked it. It's uh, built very well. Um, it is heavy duty, and it held up through our summer, through our very cold, freezing Central Florida winter so far. It's holding up well. Um, the only problem what we have with it is during a really high wind event, one of our towers uh, fell over. Um, but um, other than that, um, you know, again, it was um, held up very well. Um, the system, the only problem, other problem we had with it was that uh, we, one of the timers failed about four months after we had the system. And we went ahead and we bought um, some spare timers. And I would recommend that, again, with any... Um, hydroponic system that you have that you always keep spare timer, spare pump, some spare parts on hand. So if they do break or go down, you can replace it quick, quickly and you know not lose any of your plants um, while you're waiting for a part or something to come in the mail. We got these through Amazon.com. I found that it was cheaper. If you go through Juice Plus to get it, um, it's a little bit more expensive. Plus you're paying for your shipping and handling and tax. If you go through Amazon, you spend over your $35. You know, so you buy you know, a couple timers and you get free shipping with that and also the base price of each timer uh, was a little bit less and this is the same exact timer that you'll get through Juice Plus and that comes with the unit itself. One thing we found with the um, tower is that uh, a lot of people mistakenly call it a aeroponic system. It's not an aeroponic system. It's more of an ebb and flow type system, I would call it. An aeroponic system technically needs a sprinkler or a misting system on the roots. Um, this system works by pumping up from your basin. It goes through the center tube here all the way to the top. They call it a shower cap, which is you know small um, basin that goes to the top with holes in it. Each of the baskets have holes in the bottom and it trickles through there down through your root system and waters it that way. So again, it's, um, it was actually patented as just a general hydroponic system. And, um, that, that's basically what it is. It, it more works on like on your ebb and flow. The cycle that we use with it during the summertime, um, even through the night, is 15 minutes on, 15 off. During the wintertime, like now, uh, we have them running still during daylight hours because we're in central Florida, 15 minutes on, 15 off. But during the night, we increase the off time, and so it's only on for 15 minutes off for 30. 
Um, again, you'd have to adjust that depending on your area and how dry it is and how warm your area is. The um, one thing we found out with the unit two is that it can be hard to trim your roots on it. Here's the baskets, the net pots that come with it. They're very small and they have one like edge completely cut off so it fits in there. To insert it, you have to squeeze it and push it in. And you hear it kind of pops in place. If you have a plant in there, it's almost going to be impossible to get this out because you have to kind of get your finger in there and try to you know, pinch it. So if you need to get a plant out, if you need to trim roots, something you a lot of times you'll find you're having to take your baskets apart to pull the net pot out to get to your roots or to change a plant out. The one thing we liked about the VGS system is a VGS system. It's real easy to pop your plants in and out. It's real easy to get to your roots and trim your roots. Um, so again, that's a little bit harder with this. So I wouldn't plant anything um, that gets really huge roots like tomatoes. One thing I found out with you know tomatoes, it's whether it's in the VGS, whether it's in the tower or anything else, their the roots grow huge. Tomatoes love hydroponic, aeroponic systems, and um, their roots can really clog the system up. So what we're doing this year with our tomatoes is we're planting them in a Dutch bucket system, and that way we'll have them individually, a little bit easier to take care of and um, control them that way. The other thing with any vining plants that I found is that if you use the tower, that you're going to want to trellis them away from the tower. And again, that's to keep them from choking and shading out any other plants, smaller plants. Um, I've seen some pictures of people who grow at the tower who have the vining plants going out onto the ground. And that kind of defeats the whole purpose of going with a hydroponic system. You're going hydroponically because you want to remove the soil. You want to remove soilborne pathogens, so disease and insects and such that are in the soil. You don't want them getting in your plants. So if you have it falling down onto the ground as a vine, you're going to find that, that same, those same diseases, those same insects now have a path right to your tower. So you want to keep them up off the ground. Um, you want to keep them trellised and you want to keep them trimmed. Again, it may make for a great picture having the stuff trailing all around and growing you know, like a jungle, but it's actually not healthy for your system. So keep that in mind if you're growing a lot of vining plants with this type of system. They'll grow, but you've got to manage your roots and you've got to manage the system so that it's not um, you know, choking out your smaller plants there. The pH test kit that comes with the tower is more or less just a litmus paper. And if you're not real good with your... Um, you know, color vision or visual acuity, you're going to find it real hard sometimes to try to figure out exactly what your pH is using a, a litmus paper. So I recommend going with like a digital um, pH tester, and that's what we always do. Get one that's, you know, made for water. Don't get one that's made for testing your soil. They're, they're um, different designs to them. Um, and again, you can get one through Amazon.com for less than $10, or you can go up from there. We have a little bit better quality ones because we use them a lot more. We use them for other projects too. And so it's we have, and you don't need it, but you can get your EC, um, TDS, um, also uh, electronic you know, sensors, but it's not something you really need if you can you know, monitor your system uh, well. We use that for monitoring our nutrient levels. And we'll be, we have a video coming out on our review of the different EC meters too that are out there and explaining how to use it. So you can uh, watch that and get a little information off of that. Plus, there's tons of information available online that you can get. Um, I would recommend, too, inside the unit, these are the ones used for the extension baskets. These rods, um, there's longer ones that fit in from the bottom um, up to the top that these extensions then fit in to hold your baskets together. I would recommend some type of a lubricant. This is like a tube of a pool and spa lubricant. You just take a little bit on a q-tip and just put it on the end that way if uh, like in our case for well water you're, you're adding nutrients you're keeping a ph low uh, you don't get any corrosion or any mineral buildups uh, on there that make it harder to um, take on and off uh, you can also get a tube about a three ounce tube amazon.com of food grade look for it food grade o-ring lubricant and that's what you can use on these and uh, Again, that runs maybe about $6. You can get those on Amazon.com. One of the things that we found with the tower um, is that the access panel, the access panel is really on there tight. And I understand the concept of that. You want to keep out any contaminants and you want to keep out light so that you don't build up algae in your basin. But the problem I found is when it's on there tight, again, I don't have any nails, but if I did, I'd be busting them all the time trying to pull this off. I had to get a little screwdriver um, to pop it off. 
And if you do that, you risk gouging your plastic. You also risk, you know, risk cracking the lid or cracking the top um, uh, of your basin. So you, we don't you know, want to be doing that. So what I found is that I kind of put it on and I'll leave one quarter slightly up so that I can get my finger in there. I may take later and try to file down a little bit, see if I can make it just a little bit looser on there so it still fits down, but it's not so tight that it's um, you know, hard to get off there. Again, that's not something that's gonna make or break you know, the deal on this, but it is something to be aware of. You don't wanna be you know, damaging the top of your system or breaking your, your access panel. Again, I've heard um, one of the things with the Tower Garden is you're gonna find that there's a lot of people who are passionate about this product. And that can be, again, a good thing. It can be a bad thing. Uh, we were first introduced to the Tower Garden when we went to a commercial greenhouse uh, locally. And they're using the commercial version of the Tower, which are very you know, large units. But they also were distributors of the individual Towers through Juice Plus. Um, again, they had a lot of good experience commercial growing. And we had other people, um, the person we actually purchased through, who had other gardening experience and several years worth of using the tower, could give good advice and uh, was very knowledgeable. You're going to find some people who buy the tower and they may have never gardened in their yard uh, and have definitely never grown hydroponically before. But as soon as they buy a tower, um, they suddenly become experts on it and uh, try to tell you how to do everything. I mean, you're gonna find that out with just about you know, anything, I'm sure, but just be aware of that, that uh, you want a good support group, you want people who are knowledgeable, and you wanna to talk to people who have actually grown with this um, or grown hydroponically before, um, you, so that they have other advice can give you on their experience uh, with actually using hydroponic systems. The other thing um, is with, uh, again, with people who are very passionate about it, what I found is, especially with my videos on the VGS system that get a lot of negative comments. Uh, people who sell this product, it's sold as UV uh, protected food grade plastic. And again, I've looked up the patent on this. It's just patented as a basic hydroponic system. Uh, it doesn't really tell you what it's manufactured from or do that. I check the system inside and out, every component for any markings on the plastic, any stamps on there to see if there's any indication of um, what it can be made with or certified through. Um, I could not find anything. Now my systems are uh, ASTM and NSF approved for drinking water. So I can point to the code and I can point to my systems and say they're approved for drinking water. Um, this system I have no reason to, to doubt or believe it's not. But um, again, you're going to find people who tell you that your systems, if they're not tower garden, they're dangerous and you're killing your friends and your family if you're not using a tower. The other thing with some people who've used a tower, uh, never had hydroponic experience before, is they talk about the tower tonic. And they want to tell you that the tower was designed for that tower tonic or the tower tonic was designed specifically for the tower and you can't use anything else. The tower tonic is just a basic general purpose nutrient um, solution, hydroponic solution. We use the General Hydroponics Flora Series. We've also used a tower tonic. I put Flora Series in one tower and had the tower tonic in two others, had the Flora Series in my VGS. You couldn't tell the difference. I actually one time uh, put some tower tonic in my VGS system and no harm to the plants. The plants grow just fine. As long as you've got a good general purpose nutrient solution, um, you should be just fine. I've read some other people who've actually hooked the tower to their aquaponic systems, and uh, that's something we're gonna be doing in the future, and so we may look at um, at least some of the towers, adding them to our aquaponic system. And I've also read from a woman who's growing with the tower, and all she's using is a compost tea that she makes at home, and she's doing just fine with her towers using a compost tea um, with that. One of the big things you want to do if you don't have a lot of hydroponic experience or if you ever do is, you know, maintaining your pH. So you want to keep your pH there. We keep our pH around a six. And so that's that's the biggest thing. Your plants um, need to be at the right pH or water at the right pH so that the plants actually absorb the nutrients and get the minerals that they need. Um, one of the things we're going to be doing too with um, our towers is if you look at our installation video, you'll see we put like marks on our towers three inches down on the water basin so that um, we can go ahead and know where the fill marks were going to be. And now what we're going to do so we don't have to keep uh, playing with the towers and that is we have these stock valves and you can get these at any tractor supply center. You can also get these through Amazon.com. 
and they work just more or less like your float valve that you're going to find in the back of your toilet that uh, once it fills up you can adjust this you know up or down and makes it a lot easier because some people will buy these and they think it's more or less just a plug and play system you build it you put it together put your plants in it boom you forget about it you're going to need at least one hour every week working on this system um, maybe one hour per tower if you have multiple towers you're going to in the summertime you're going to be always wanting to watch your water level and keeping that up you're going to be adjusting your ph and maintaining your ph and you're also going to be wanting to watch your your nutrient level and uh, you're going to want to be trimming your plants both outside and want to be trimming your roots so it's again it's not a system you just plug, put up there and you forget about it as with any hydroponic aquaponic or aeroponic system or even gardening there's going to be things you're doing you may have gotten rid of your weeds but you still have bugs and pests that can uh, get into the system. You also want to watch your, again, your water quality uh, so that uh, that's maintained and you have healthy plants. So overall, we um, like the system and it's a good system. It's growing things very well. Um, uh, I would recommend it, especially for somebody, if you're not a do-it-yourselfer and you can afford this, it is a good starting system. It's something to get into the hydroponics uh, field with if you're interested and uh, growing, you know, again, your own uh, fresh fruits and vegetables at home. Uh, I would, again, uh, stress that if you have any vining plants, tomatoes and all that, you can grow them just fine in, in these systems. I, however, again, this year we're going to be using our tomatoes in a Dutch bucket system because they're so invasive. The roots just love hydroponic systems and grow so large, and the tomatoes love it. They get so big, but, um, again, uh, trying to keep them trellised out and uh, keep them trimmed and especially keeping the roots trimmed is, is pretty labor intensive so with the Dutch bucket system you can drop our individual tomato plants in those and uh, not be as worried about them it, it takes a little bit uh, less time than dealing with that again we've grown these side by side with our VGS system and uh, they, they grow just well our VGS system is running fine also We've used both the General Hydroponics Floor Series as well as the Tower Tonic. The Tower Tonic, if you buy that, uh, something I failed to mention, it runs about $40 for the Tower Tonic. Plus, you're going to add another $20 for your shipping and tax to that. So about $60 anytime you need Tower Tonic. Tower Tonic can also only be bought through your Juice Plus distributor. So again, if you um, are looking outside and you're trying to find something like that at your um, local hydroponic store you're not going to find it you can only get it through juice plus distributors um, so again that's why i use the general hydroponics floor series we're also going to be experimenting this year we're trying to develop our own um, uh, nutrient solic um, solution that's uh, you know water um, soluble solution so as we test that and we work with that we'll add videos and we'll add things to our post with that so if you have any questions please feel free to ask uh, please feel free to send your comments and suggestions to us. We really appreciate them. And if you're going to send suggestions, keep them um, you know, constructive. And uh, we, again, appreciate your time. We thank you for bearing with us. There will be more information on our blog uh, with information typed up. We want to try to keep this video a little bit shorter. So there is more information um, on the blog. It will also have some links on our blog and some other uh, still photos on there. So go ahead and check that out. Like us if you want. Again, comments and suggestions are more than welcome. Check out our blog, and we'll see you next time. Happy gardening.